how to invest in the Nigerian stock market without losing your capital. In this video, I'm going to show you the strategy to invest in the Nigerian stock market without exposing your capital to the risk of market fluctuations. You know, one of the biggest concerns of every trader is how they can mitigate risk because the stock market is always known for price fluctuations. Today, price is up. Tomorrow, price is down. Today, price is up. Tomorrow, price is down. And then you're wondering how you can actually protect your capital. Most importantly, some point, there's an extent where you will see your portfolio. You prefer to just get your capital back and run away because of the state of the market. So this strategy basically is for people that are looking to get started in the market. And also if you're experienced in the market and then you've been recording a lot of loss. So I think this would help you reduce your loss rate in the market. And at the same time, um, eliminate potential for capital loss. If you are still getting started or if you're looking to master uh, the market, or maybe you're growing and then your capital is very key for you, but then you still want to play in the market, but not without exposing your capital. So here, I'm going to show you the simple, safest strategy to tap into the billionaire opportunities in the stock market at zero risk. Yes, when I say zero risk, it's zero risk. So I'm not trying to form, I'm not trying to uh, put up a headline that would attract a lot of clicks of view, but here I'm going to share ideas that I think um, has worked for few members of my community. And then I, I also think it makes sense for anyone um, especially uh, members of my WhatsApp, uh, YouTube community to know about this. And then I'll also show you how to play it and how it works. Now, I'm going to be using a live illustration. So here, we're not going to be talking theory, theory, theory. So you're going to see me go to the market, we would run a check, and then I'm going to be using 2023 data into 2024. Um, yes, into so I'm looking at um, January 2023 data to so January 2024 data. So whatever I share right here will be back by data, but then it's important that um, you note the stock I'm going to mention. They are not actually a buy at this point. I only use them as illustration and I also uh, use them to share ideas on how you can leverage uh, this strategy to grow your wealth without necessarily um, losing your money or exposing your money to price uh, fluctuations. So here's a disclaimer. Please, the ideas shared in this video are based on my personal research and recommendation. Um, kindly do your due diligence before you invest. Uh, in the company stocks I mentioned, they are not by recommendation. I only use them for the purpose of this video, just to share the idea and how you can take advantage of uh, the opportunities it presents. And then uh, the stock market also comes with a lot of risk due to uncertainty. So when you're investing in stocks, um, even though I'm going to share how we can protect your capital, but then uh, whatever money you're still putting in the market is still subject to market fluctuation. But the overall end point for me is make sure your capital. So what is important here is your capital. Basically, your capital are not uh, necessary that you're going to be making overnight return. So most important thing is, as long as I can get my capital back, then it means you're safe, you're investing safely. Now, the final one is, um, please make sure you vet my recommendation based on your risk profile. So uh, before you adopt the idea I'm about to share, check yourself, make sure that it aligns with your personal risk profile before you go ahead to do this. But I think this works uh, very well for those in their 40s, 50s, and uh, as long as capital preservation is key for you or you have the word conservative in your risk um, in your risk profile, then something you need to pay attention to. So what you learn in this video, here I'm going to teach you um, the pros and cons of stock markets and why it's a high risk and high reward investment. And then um, how to reduce your risk in the markets and then build a diversified portfolio of profitable stocks that makes money. This is also very key. And then secrets to play the market if you don't like risk. So I want to share the secrets to play the market for someone that is coming to the stock market and is scared that, oh, I'm going to lose my money. Uh, what if I lose my money? What happens? So I'll share how you can still play the stock market safely and why this model is 100% safe and guarantees a capital preservation. Yes. That's the most important thing. Please, whatever I'm projecting right here in this video is capital preservation, ensuring that your capital is still there at the end of the day. So I'm going to share investment ideas you can adopt and also be part of opportunities in the stock market. So let's start. Now, why you should invest in Nigerian stock? You know, I will keep projecting this and I'll keep projecting this and I'll keep projecting this. Nigerian stock market is a very profitable platform 
to make good money. If you know what to do, if you know how to do your research, if you know how to play the market, and most importantly, if you have the right knowledge and belong or you're part of the right group or right set of people. So the stock market offers limitless opportunities to become part owner of thriving local and global businesses. So that's the first thing. You know, you want to start a business, you don't have the capital, you don't have the human resources, you don't have the tech, you don't have the materials and everything you need to get that business started. One easy way to one easy way to move on to create wealth for yourself is to join an existing business that is thriving. So why not? Look for a business that is doing well and then buy shares, be a part owner of that business so that at the end of the day, whatever profit they generate, you, you, are, you are part of it, you're a part owner of the company. So you have a share of the, of the profit. Now, the second part is that you can beat inflation by buying safe, high growth stocks, especially the low price stock. This is also one important part. You know, inflation is one of the uh, major threats to everybody's money. You know, whether you like it or not, inflation is eating deep into your money because, um, one million era you had 10 years ago is not the same as one million you have today. So they are different. Why? Because of inflation. So the nominal value of that money is still one million, but the real value of that money, which is what it can buy, has changed. So how do you keep up? How do you ensure that your money still has value? So by making sure that you beat inflation. And one of the easiest ways to beat inflation is to buy into um high growth companies in the market. High growth companies are companies that are growing fast, companies that are expanding market share, companies that have new products, companies that are experiencing increase in sales, most importantly, and then companies that are, their products are brand. People love their products very well. And then inelastic products too, also are part of high growth products. Then um, diversify your wealth. It's another opportunity to diversify your wealth and build a balanced portfolio. You know, you have a business, you have investment in different uh, sectors, different industries. Stock is also one of the places you can consider as part of diversification, you know, you have, so that whatever happens, you know that to an extent you're safe, especially when you build a balanced portfolio across different industries. The truth is all the industries, all the sectors cannot go down at once. Even COVID that almost came to wipe out sectors. You notice that some sectors like communication were still benefiting. Banking stocks benefited a lot. So the thing is, there will always be a sector that benefits from every economic situation and economic event. So that's one uh, some of my reasons why you should invest in the stock market. So don't look at it from the perspective of what happened. A lot of people are still living in 2008 market crash when we have moved past that era a long time ago. Learn from your mistake. Learn the things you did wrong correct yourself, and then use that correction to build your strategy and then move on. Because each time you talk to people about stocks, then the next day they'll tell you, oh, we lost money in 2008. Stock is no longer, you know, it's crazy. But the thing is, the truth is, whether you like it or not, the stock market still remains a vehicle for wealth creation. Why? Because in the stock market, you are part owner of a business. And then whether you like it or not, you buy products that these businesses sell. So, at the end of the day, you complain that palm oil is expensive. You complain that rice is expensive. You complain that uh, soap is expensive. You complain that paste is expensive. You complain that different products are becoming expensive. But you forgot that it is the same business that are listed in the stock market that are selling that same product to you. So why not buy shares in that business? So that at the end of the year, whatever profit they're going to generate with your money, you also be a part owner of the same money. It's simple. Like I always tell people, if banks are charging you or are collecting your money via bank charges, you can collect your money back as dividend. So if my bank is sending me debit alerts, oh, charges, maintenance, I smile. Why? Because at the end of the year, once you declare profit, I will collect all my money back. So they get the money off you via charges. You get your money off them via dividend. It's simple. So you see why stock market is very, very uh, important for anyone that wants to create wealth. So how do you make money in the stock market? I'm taking my time to explain this for beginners who might be watching this video and just want to understand from ground up. Now, you can make money by buying a stock for dividend. Just like I shared, when you buy for dividend, you get a share of the company's annual uh, profit distribution. That means at the end of the year, when the company declares profit, you are also part owner of that company's uh, profit. So that's uh, dividend. Then the second one is you can buy a stock for capital appreciation. You get in early on a company like this one is a bit complex, but most profitable if you do it well. Now, the first one is low risk methods to build wealth in the stock market. You buy, you collect dividend, you reinvest over time. Now, the second method is high risk, high reward strategy, where you're looking for companies that their share prices are 
primed for appreciation and then you buy them at a lower end of the market hoping that you will sell them in the future for higher prices so some of the stocks you can buy for price appreciation are number one value stocks growth stocks and turnaround stocks what are value stocks value stocks are stocks that are selling below their fair value stocks that the market is yet to capture their um their their growth potential and then the price at which they are selling the market is far below what is worth so you're going to the market to buy an iphone and you know this iphone should be worth three hundred and fifty thousand dollars based on value and someone is selling it to you for uh, 200k or 150k because the person needs money so that's what we say oh this phone is cheap why is it cheap because the value you're getting from that phone is far more than what you're paying that's exactly what value stocks is stocks that are worth more than their prices in the market now the other kind of stocks are growth stock growth stocks are companies that are growing faster like when you look at their sales results their sales reports is showing like 1500 1000 percent growth these companies they are innovating, they are using new products, a lot of people are buying them, in short, they are trending stocks in the market. Now, there was, there was a time Tesla was trending, and there were times even here in Nigeria that you see some of our companies, like when GTB came out, you see a lot of people were jumping on GTB uh, uh, banking stocks. Why GTB stocks? I mean, because a lot of people love GTB brands, like the bank was doing, were innovating tech, most disrupting uh, the banking sector. That's exactly what you mean by uh, a growth stock, but it doesn't mean GTV is a buy right now. I'm just trying to share an idea of a growth stock. Then we have this third one, which is turnaround stocks. I have a video on this particular, um, how to make money, three ways to make money in stock market. I'll share a link where I took my time to talk about this kind of stocks. And I even share specific examples of stocks that are value stocks, growth stock, and then turnaround stock. From the word turnaround, when you say turnaround, turnaround means these guys have been beating down. They've passed through years of loss in the market, and now they are looking to turn their fortune around. So one of the major uh, feature of a turnaround stock is that the stock price would have been beating down for years. So when you look at the past three, four, five, six, six, six years, this stock had been beaten down. So that's an example of a turnaround stock. Like, let me share one example of a turnaround stock. I've shared this multiple times um, in the market. So uh, example of a turnaround stock uh, is uh, PZ. PZ was once beaten down. Can you see from a price of almost uh, 60, 59 to 60 Naira, you can see how this stock crashed to reach a low of 30 and then picked up. So at the point where they are picking up, that's what we say they are turning around. Now, one of the major features of a turnaround stock is you tend to see what we call a U-shaped recovery or a V-shaped recovery, depending on the one that plays out. So that's what we call turnaround stock. They are turning around after years of being beaten down because of consistent loss or bad management, bad product, depending on the event that actually led to that market dip. So these are the simple ways you can make money in the market. So, but this video will be focused more on the second part, which is capital appreciation. So I'm looking at how you can invest in the stock market without risking your capital, but yet grow your return via um, capital appreciation. But the most important thing is capital preservation, capital preservation. So how can I protect my capital? Oh, I have this money in the bank. I want to invest it, but do not want to lose the money, but yet I still want to get return. So like you're saying that I want lower risk or almost zero risk and high return. People ask, is it possible in the market? Can I end zero risk? Can I uh, probably be exposed to zero risk and earn higher return? You know, people talk about low risk, low return, high risk, high return. But is zero risk, high return possible in the market? But I think this strategy uh, is saying, yes, it's possible. And then you'll see how it works. So what are the risks inherent in the stock market? If I don't talk about the risk inherent in the stock market after discussing how to make money, I don't think it's complete. So I need to also let you know that the stock market itself comes with a lot of risk. Your stocks are subject to market risk and volatility, and volatility can affect your portfolio's performance. So don't think when you put your money in stocks and then because of uh, the fact that I said you could start losing your money, you said there you are guaranteed not to lose your money. What I'm going to show you right here is first protect the capital and then invest so that's what, 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 what of things I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you. So um, second part is if a company collapse or declare bankrupt, that could lead to a loss of investment capital. That's one of the major risks in stock. That's why you don't invest or buy a business without doing your due diligence, without understanding the company's profile, especially financial uh, uh, 
um, statement, uh, what the financial statement is saying. Then the returns are not fixed. Stock market is not savings or fixed deposit account where you put money and then at the end of the day, you're expecting a fixed return. Your fi returns are not fixed. Even dividend itself is not even fixed. What you end this year might be smaller or bigger. What if the company declares uh, lower dividends next year? So returns generally in stock market are not fixed. They varies with stock prices and then based on companies' financials. So I'm just trying to uh, make this easier for beginners to quickly catch up with uh, the stock market. Now, how do you reduce your risk in the markets? That's, that's the part that I think you are most interested in, right? Which, which is where uh, the capital preservation is coming in. Now, how do you reduce your risk? How can I play in the stock market without giving up my capital, without losing my money? Now, for beginners looking to get started, but aren't well grounded in stock, this is very key. You know, I've I've done a lot of coaching, one-on-one -on -one section with people, and then in short, it's just like I'm coaching more of beginners than people that already um, experience in the market, which is normal because the smart ones that are beginners that are getting in, they'll prefer one-on-one -on -one coaching section and then get to ask their questions before they invest their money. If you have 10 million in the market, 10 million to invest, why not put like 1% or 2% of that money in education just to know whether it's worth it. If you look at it and it's not worth it, keep your money. But if you look at it and it's worth it, at least you have the knowledge to manage the remaining part of your money. So for beginners that are looking to the uh, to the stock market, I strongly advise that you explore strategies that preserve your capital before you improve or master the market. You know, one of the things I also discovered is that when a beginner loses his money in the stock market, he is completely discouraged. Like, he just assumed that this market is not for me, not knowing that loss is also part of the game. So one of the things you can do to encourage yourself in the market is to see how to preserve your capital. So that if anything, even if anything happens, you know your money is not touched. You know the amount you have actually wanted to invest earlier on is still safe. Do you understand? So this is where risk minimization comes in. So this is where risk minimization comes in. So I'm going to share an approach that you can adopt to preserve your capital and then still take advantage of opportunities in the market. And we're going to work with real data. You're going to see me carry out hypothetical um, analysis of certain stocks and then and what you should do before you even start buying the stock. So first thing you want to learn is what to do before you go to the stock market. So don't go straight to the stock market and start investing your money. If you go like that, which is what uh, people are used to and which I think is not bad because um, if you're experienced in the market, then why not? Especially if you have more winning rates than loss. But for you that is getting started, for you that is looking to um, test the waters before you know how to play the market. Why not adopt what I call the hybrid approach? This is the hybrid approach. So the hybrid approach requires you to combine or leverage the power of money markets or fixed income markets and then the stock market. So one of the ways to play the stock market without risk is to adopt the hybrid approach by leveraging the money market or fixed income market. So this is what you should do. And so this analysis, CBM monetary policy rate is around 26.25%, with yield on Treasury bill and FGM bond printing above 20% return per annum. This is, this is like free money right now in the fixed income market. So is it not smart? So is it not smart? Yes, that's what we say that. Now, is it not smart to first buy fixed income assets and use the interest return to buy fundamentally sound stocks that are emerging from the bottom and ride them to your TB and FGM bond matures. That is one smart strategy you can adopt. By doing that, your capital is preserved in the money market, fixed income market. Now, the return you're going to earn from the fixed income market, you can now use that to play the stock market and grow your return. So if, for instance, TB is giving me an average of 20%, now, an investor who is not aware of this approach, would buy TB, fine, collect 20% and spend it. But a smarter person will not only buy TB to collect the return, he would invest the return in a stock that would likely go up by the time the Treasury B and FGM bond matures. So that means you are not going to collect the same return as that person at the end of the year if the person plays the stock market in a smart way. And I'll tell you the strategy to get this, 
Now, this is not something that is here. This is something that, like I showed you, like I told you before, I'm going to share data to see how this will work. And then you'll be so surprised how you can actually earn more return on your investments without losing your capital by leveraging the power of stock. So first thing is buy fixed income assets and use the return to buy fundamentally sound stocks that are emerging from the bottom. So if you have 500K, 1M, and then you, want, you don't want to lose that 500K, buy treasury bill. When you buy a treasury bill and then you collect 20%, 20% of 500K is what? 100K. So you can then sort of eating that 100K, you can then plow that 100K back to stock, but not just into any stock, but fundamentally sound stocks that are emerging from the bottom. This is key. Any stock outside this particular model, this checklist may not give you a return. So it has to be a fundamentally sound stocks and it must be emerging from the bottom. Why did I stress emerging from the bottom? Because in the stock market, you make money when you buy low and sell high. Now, when you buy low, you don't just buy low on any stock. Because if you buy the low of any stock, you may lose money. What if the company is collapsing for a reason? What if the company is collapsing because their financials are not okay, because the fundamentals are not strong? So, but when you buy the low of a stock that has been beaten down, but has good fundamentals, like you look up, look down, nothing is wrong. Okay, let me share an instance. Um, in April, I remember when I shared a video on my YouTube channel on Yuka. This is just an example of this type of stocks. I shared a video on my YouTube channel on Yuka. So let me quickly take you to uh, that video on Yuka. So we're going to use... Uh, that as an example before we delve into the proper uh, illustration. Now, look at, this is my video. This is my channel. And um, I think it was in April 24th. 24th of April. Uh, let me get that video on you. Yes, this is it here. Two months ago. This is it here. Two months ago, I shared this video on UCAP. UCAP stock was on deep. UCAP stock was on deep when I shared this video. You can go watch it on my channel. Now, I talked about um, how to buy stock on deep. And then some of the things I shared on UCAP was UCAP is down, UCAP is low. But when you look through fundamentals of UCAP, sector play and everything, there was nothing wrong on UCAP. In short, when I posted that video two months ago, UCAP was selling for 16 Naira. So if we go to our chart, now I'm doing this live test for you to see how it works so that it won't look like I'm trying to uh, form whatever or trying to uh, sweet talk you or probably get you to just click my video because I want to sell my channel. No. Here, this is analysis. Around, you can see two months ago, today is uh, 26th of, so around 26th, thereabouts, you can see here, UCAP was already added. So two months ago should be uh, 25, 26th of April. So UCAP was selling for 16 Naira when I posted that video. It was timely when I posted that video. Now imagine that you had bought UCAP at 16 Naira and UCAP is currently selling for 21.85. So 21.85 minus 16. That's like um, 5 Naira 85 Kobo. 5 Naira 0.85. UCAP would have given you an average of 36% between, that's in two months, from April to June 26th, where I'm posting, I'm talking about this video right now. This is it here, 36% on UCAP from this region. So whatever I'm sharing with you right now is not ESA. That's why I'm taking my time to be transparent. At least you have this video on my YouTube channel, which you can always watch. So you was selling for 16 Naira when I posted that video. Why did I post UCAP at that point? It was because UCAP passed the checklist for fundamentally sound oversold stocks, fundamentally sound stocks that are emerging from the bottom. UCAP was beating down. UCAP was beating down and is emerging from the bottom. So when a stock is down and it's emerging from the bottom, what exactly do you think would happen? It means the upside potential of that stock is very, very high. The upside potential on that stock is very, very high. So, so that is UCAP for you. So buying fundamentally sound oversold stocks that are emerging from the bottom is very key. Now, because the approach here is we don't want to go into the stock market, the stretch, or with our full capital. Why not buy CBN Treasury Bill or FGM bond? Then the return you're 
getting from that fixed income, you can then use it to play the stock market. By doing that, you your capital is safe. You preserve your capital in fixed income market and then play the stock market at zero risk. Now, even if the market crashes, the stock goes down, are you still going to lose your money? Your capital is safe somewhere with the government. So what you are only playing is the return on that investment, not the capital. Did you get the point? That's exactly what to do. So let's continue with the hybrid approach. So I want to share um, a practical um, approach to get this done and how we, how this works. So we're going to work with January 2023 data. So in January 2023, CBN monetary policy rates was 17.2%. So if we go to our charts and you search CBN interest rates, CBN interest rates. So let's look at um, Nigeria economy here. This is it. So in 2020, you can see right here, January 2020, yes, around, you can see here, 17.2 around this region. You can see January. So in January 2023, sorry, um, average interest rate was around 17.3. So 17.3, that means yield on money market instruments like TBs over, over around 14 to 15%. So that means if you invest the money in CBN Treasury bill, you would collect between 14 to 15% return in the market that's upfront now let's say you had one million era to conservatively invest so i want to highlight this here you want to invest one million conservatively meaning i don't want to lose the money i want to preserve the capital don't just come up with any random investment i'm not ready to put this money in the stock markets because i can lose it the stock market comes with a lot of risk but yet you want a higher return above inflation of 21.52%. Because within the same period, inflation was still around 21.52%. So what would you do? What is the best advice? I have $1 million to invest, but I don't want to lose the money. But then I want to earn higher return above inflation because the return on this TB is below inflation. If um, Treasury B will give me 15%, inflation is around 21%. So that means I'm getting a negative return of 6%. So does it make sense for me to just invest in Treasury B, collect the money, and then sit down? No, when I know that inflation is far higher. So I have to be a lot more smart, smarter. So if you're in Nigeria, you have to be a lot more smarter in your investment approach. It makes a lot of sense. So what would you do at that point? If I ask you now, what would you do? You know, you start thinking, um, um, okay, invest in stock. But then I'm saying the stock market comes with a lot of risk. This person is saying he doesn't want to lose the money. He doesn't want to lose the money. If it's okay, go for treasury bill. But treasury bill is giving me return below inflation. So how can I earn return above inflation? Why conserving? Why preserving my capital? And yet I'm earning far more than inflation rates. So here's what you do. You, the hybrid approach, this is how it works. Now you have 1 million. This is what you're going to do. Now, I will buy TB of 1 million era. That means I'm going to put that 1 million era in treasury bill, right? And then collect 15% interest upfront. So, which is like, uh, that's like uh, 150,000 naira. Now, should I spend the money? No, don't spend the money. So, first, you have preserved your capital with the government, Treasury B, which is safe. So at the end of one year, you want your $1 million back, no story. But the 150K is looking at you, like, what would you do? Would I spend the money? Because the return is far below inflation of 21%. So the next thing I would do is to now split the money into five stocks in five different sectors. Five stocks in five different sectors. Now, invest 30K each in fundamentally sound oversold stocks across sectors. Now, we are coming back to the same fundamentally sound oversold stock. Can you see the keyword? Now, this is the same stock that I talked about on my YouTube channel, UCAP, and UCAP had done average of 36% in two months. So if you can get 36% in two months, is that not far more than uh, TB, but then you still don't want to expose your capital because what if the stock crashes? Because this person wants to invest the money conservatively. His risk is zero. I don't want anything. I don't want to lose my money. So split the money into five. Invest 30K each in fundamentally sound oversold stock. That means if you're looking to put this interest in stock, 
it has to be a fundamentally sound over source stores. Anything outside this, forget it. If you put your money outside this type of stocks, forget it. Your risk is very high because in fundamentally sound oversold stock, number one, it's already oversold, meaning it's at the bottom. And when your downside risk is low, your upside is high. So because the stock market doesn't move in a straight line, the stock market moves in what I call wave pattern. The stock market moves in wave pattern. Let's look at a stock like um, UBA, just to illustrate uh, this point. Now look at it here. In wave pattern, you can see wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up. So it didn't move in a straight line. You, so if I go back here, you will see the same thing here. You can see wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. Wave. So you need to know the current wave that that stock is. And for me, I like to buy a stock when it's completing its wave down pattern so that the next wave, which is up, I will jump in and ride the stock up to the uh, probably 15, 20, 30 percent. And I will say, so first you must learn how to identify a fundamentally sound oversold because that oversold is what helps you to complete that wave down pattern. Now, it is because it's a sound stock. It has good fundamentals. And you know what? When a, a stock with good fundamentals is cheap, people jump in. Oh, the stock is cheap and nothing is wrong. They enter, just like I explained on UCAP. So if a stock is not fundamentally sound, don't even go near there. And if it's fundamentally sound, for me, it has to be oversold because by buying it an oversold region, I am buying at a bargain price. And then I could even go ahead to launch my valuation tool and check if the stock is undervalued by looking at the fair value of the stock against market price. So now I'm going to pick um five stocks. And these five stocks, we are... Some of the stocks I recommended in 2023. 2023. So I didn't pick any random stocks. I picked stocks that I personally traded in 2023. And because they were fundamentally sound oversold stock. Now, that was early January. So the stock prices you're seeing right here are their prices as of January 2023. NASCOM, EZ, UBA, Hunt Oil, and Mansat. You can check the prices just to confirm. UBA early January 2023 was selling around, this is it, around here, 7 Naira. You can see here, January is around this region. Okay, 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 okay. This is it here. You can see here, you can see around between 7 to 8 Naira. You can see here, that's UBA. So all the stocks here, these are their prices as of January. So you can do your check. You can check for PZ2. So let's look at PZ. I'm taking my time to share this data and also prove it so that it won't look like I am picking numbers um, randomly. So as of January 2023, right here, you can see that, okay, around this region, you can see here, PZ was around the 11 to 12 Naira within this region here. 11 to 12 Naira within this region. And then UBA2, NASCOM, if you check NASCOM, Corn Oil and Mansard, NASCON in January um, was selling for, and in short, uh, the boom, the first time I, I recommended NASCON early last year, that was the period tomato was scarce. And NASCON is a stock that benefits from tomato scarcity because it sells spices. You can see NASCON was selling around 10 Naira. So you can check other stocks, corn oil 26.5, and then Mansard was selling for 2 Naira. So imagine that within that period, maybe first week in January, or uh, probably um, in December, you decided to buy uh, CBN Treasury bill, maybe first week, and then you had the money in January, or maybe even that January period, that first week in January, when they announced. So just buy Treasury bill. Now, the upfront interest, you decide to spread the money equally among these five stocks. That's corn, PZ, UBA, corn oil. And, and as at this period, these stocks were fundamentally sound and oversold. So it wasn't, I didn't pick them randomly. There were stocks that I recommended for those in my community. They will see it when we're running on uh, the, our old platform, which was our teacher stocks. So I recommend these stocks. And then, now if you have invested 30K each in these particular stocks, what would have happened? So this would have given you, um, this is the number of units of the each of the stocks, 2,884 units of NASCON. That's what you would have probably um, seen in your portfolio. That's by buying 30K worth of NASCON in January. In 
generally your PZ, you would have gotten 2,479 units, and then UPA, 3,896 units, Con Oil, 1,132 units, and then Mansard, 30 divided by 5 Naira. The price of Mansard there was 2 Naira. So 15,000 units. So this is what you would have had in your portfolio. And total of everything would have been an average, at least between 149,900 and something or 150K on average. This is as at January 2023, which is the interest on that money. Now, what happened? As at January 2024, January 24, in 12 months, that means by the time your TB matures, that means you would have bought 365 days TB one year. Now, by the time your TB matures, this is what would have, that would have given you um, this return. Now, 2,894 units of NASCON would have given you 151. What happened? Because NASCON in January 2024, in January 2024, January 2024 is around this region. And I'm using the opening price in January. Yes, January 2024, NASCON traded around the 61. Let's go back to check here. 10 Naira, 8 Naira, 5. So you can see around 54. You can see 54.2 or thereabouts. So if you multiply that 54 by 2008, that would have given you this here. So 54 times 2,884. On average, you can see here, almost 155,000. You can see here. So but the exact price I picked was the opening price as at January 2024. I picked the opening price, not closing price. So your NASCON investment of 30K in January 2023 would have become 151,000 in January 2024. Your investment in PZ, 30K investment in PZ would have been 71,891. 30K investment in UBA would have been 98,000. 30K investment in corn oil would have been 94,000. And 30K investment in Mansat would have been 82,000 Naira. See, just see how this good fundamentally sound stock had given you mad, like a, a massive return. Now, this is a data that I picked that January 2023 to 2024. Now, it does not mean that when else you invest, all the stocks will go up. But I can give you one very strong assurance that as long as they are fundamentally sound oversold stock, oversold means you are buying them at the bottom, they are they have ended their wave down pattern and about to move up, your chance of any money from capital position is very high. A larger number of your stocks will go up. Just imagine NASCON alone had covered up the total investment of 150K in a year. How much did we invest? 150K. One stock has already given us 150K. So assuming that out of these one, two, three, four, five stocks, only two stocks gave us profit and the rest was loss, you will still have made money because 151 plus 71 would have given you over 200 and something thousand dollars. Then if you add the remaining units you have here, maybe smaller, then you should have earned at least 200K. So here, you can see that the, all the stocks went up, but don't always assume that all the stocks will go up. There are times where at the end of the year, or by maturity, some of the stocks might have dipped. But as long as they are fundamentally sound oversold stock, I will tell you the truth, you will definitely make money. That's the truth. Because one, you bought into stocks with good fundamentals, and then you buy, bought them at the lower end of the market. And these stocks are stocks that are benefiting from economic events, just like I've been telling them in the group. Now, when you add all this together, total investment portfolio would have increased to 490,000 naira. That's like 226% increase in 12 months. The 150K you collected from CBN Treasury bill in January 2023 would have turned to 490K by January 2024. That's almost 226% return because you bought into fundamentally sound stock. And guess what? Your risk is zero because your capital is what? It's with the government. So when you now compare this return, so let's look at the cumulative investment return. On maturity of your T-bill in 2024, you would collect your 1 million era back from governments. This is what is the initial money you had invested and say, oh, take your money back. Now, you will now have earned a cumulative return of 490,000 era, 165, at zero risk. Why was it zero risk? Because your capital was not exposed to the market. Now, your average return on total investments 
would have been 49%, which is 490,000 divided by 1 million naira. So imagine how you'd have earned 49%, which is two times or far above the inflation rate of 21.5%. This is how to invest in the stock market without losing your capital. Leverage on the high return that fixed income market is offering right now. Stack your money there, collect the 20%, then use that 20% to clear the stock market. At the end of the year, that 20% would have grown to an average of like 30, 40, 50%. So if you know how to play the market, if you understand the concept of buying fundamentally sound over so stock, which is exactly uh, what I spotted on UCAP when I posted it on my YouTube. For those that are keyed in into this UCAP, by now they are sitting on 36% comfortably. That's as at the point I posted this particular video because I averaged down on UCAP massively to an average of like between, I think between 17 to 18, 17.5, between 17 to 7.5 to 18 naira there about. And UCAP is sitting at 21 naira. So there was a lot, there's a lot of things, a lot of lessons to learn from this strategy. You can preserve your capital in the fixed income market and use the return to grow and earn return above inflation. It's very possible. So the stock market is not a high risk place, just like people have been saying. It's a place where you can multiply your money if you know what you're doing, especially if you know how to pick fundamentally sound stock. This is something I've mastered over the years. Even in my community, this is some, the only problem many of us have is that we are not patient enough. Because number one, uh, you have not you don't pick the right stock. That's number one. So when you pick the wrong stock, it is difficult to be patient. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about how to be patient in the stock market. Patient is not being patient in the stock market is not oh I'm waiting let me fold my hand. No, there are steps. There are practical steps. Things you need to do to make sure that you are patient in the market. So that when you follow this, you naturally see yourself being patient in the market. So patient is not something you force yourself to do. It's not something you, you say, oh, I want to be patient. It's something you do, like it's a practical step. So if you don't know the steps to be patient, it will be difficult for you to be patient. It will be very difficult for you to be patient if you don't know the steps. So in my video, I'm working on a slide on how to be how to be a patient investor, how to be a patient trader in the market. Once you follow this guide, you will naturally see that, oh, I'm patient in the market because I follow the steps to be patient. Why? The most of the money you will make in the market is not dependent on your strategy. Most of the money you make in the market are dependent on your patience. If you're not a patient trader, no matter how good your strategy is, you will lose money. You will not make money. So please, patience is very, very key in this market. So while I've talked about how to grow your money in the market without exposing them, without losing your capital, let's look at the type of stocks that can generate this kind of return. You know, it's important we talk about the kind of stocks. What kind of stocks can I trade? Because you don't jump into the market randomly. You don't collect your return and buy, if you buy dividend stock, at the end of the year, you'll be collecting 10, 15, 20, 15%, which is not bad, but then you're not still beating inflation with that return. We want to grow. This is zero risk, high return model. Buy TB, buy FGM bond, use the return to multiply your money in the stock market. Now, these are the kind of stocks that can give you the return that I just mentioned right now. And so the time uh, these stocks were buy, for me, these stocks I mentioned right here, Nascon, PZ, UBA, Corn Oil, and Mansard, they were one. Some of them were even a combination of these type of stocks I want to share. So here are the, there are two types of stocks that can that will generate return like this. There are two types of stocks in the market. So when you're picking stocks, make sure they fall under one. Some can even be two at the same time. First one, growth stocks. It has to be a growth stock with impressive fundamentals and emerging from oversold region after a prolonged sell pressure. It has to be emerging from the bottom of the market. So when um, I recommended corn oil at some point, in short, my entry on corn oil was actually lower than the price I mentioned um, in the slide earlier on. It was lower, but then I just want to be Fair. I don't want to exaggerate. I know my entry on corn oil was far, far lower. 
Why? Because I had spotted the scarcity. You know, one of the things that moved corn oil was because of events in oil and gas sector and how after, uh, when CBN removed, uh, sorry, federal government removed subsidies. So that was that had happened a year before the election. That was, I think, earlier in 2022, between October and November, there was scarcity before the election in um, in May, around May. No, sorry, February 2023. So then before May, we saw Connor had been picking up. Then when uh, federal government announced the removal of subsidy, we saw the pickup um, take effect. So that is corn oil. And then if you look at other stocks here on Mansart, in short, Mansart was already on my watch list in January. And then when we had our cash out from Nigerian stocks webinar in August, I still mentioned Mansart last year. And I told them Mansart was a buy. This was the region Mansart that was also a buy before it picked up again. So you can see, and I'm sure if you've been following my updates, both in the community and on YouTube, you'll see that everything I've been sharing have been playing out in the market. Then the second type of stocks to buy for this strategy is turn around stocks. Now, turn around stocks are stocks that have been beating down for years and are reversing their multi-year record of losses and dwindling revenue into profit with economic events supporting future growth. Example of a turnaround stock that was PZ. You know, sure, PZ was a stock of the year. So you can see here. So PZ uh, was um, a stock that I mentioned earlier on. And then you saw what happened when PZ picked up around in January. So look at PZ. PZ was beating down and then picked up. So these are what I call turnaround stocks. The multi years. PZ, PZ was trading around uh, 5960 as at May 2013, you can see 2013 down into 2023. That was almost 10 years. So 10 years after. So that's what we call turnaround stocks. They've been beating down for years and then it started picking up. Uh, Judas Bejar is also another example of a turnaround stock. Judas Bejar was have been beating down for years. Can you see from 2013 down and then you see suddenly it picked up. This Judas Bejar is already close to 100. If you watch my video, I said Judas Bejar should be trading at price not less than 100 based on my fair value calculation. So that is so you see that you can actually spot good stock in the market by following this guide growth stocks turn around stocks so that when you buy treasury bill and then you want to put your money back in stock market ask yourself what are the growth stocks in the market right now what are the growth stocks that are oversold what are growth stocks that have huge upside potential because the company is benefiting from economic events now both growth stocks and turn around stocks they are they must be benefiting from economic events that's also very important because something must be driving that growth. So fundamentals don't just happen. Um, a company just generates good sales out of blues. There must be something happening in that sector that would have supported the growth. So the same thing for turnaround stocks. A stock might not be doing well, but something might have been happening in that sector that helped, or maybe management is diversifying into other sectors. But the most important thing is that these guys must be benefiting from economic events. So when you want to generate good returns like this, in the stock market by leveraging uh, the return you have earned from the fixed income market, money market, by growth stocks, number one, and also by turn around stocks. These are the two kind of stocks that can give you good return in the market. If you look at the stocks I mentioned, some were growth, like for instance, NASCON was a growth stock. Um, UCAP was a, U, no, not UCAP, UBA, I mean. UBA was a growth stock because of the impressive return. Uh, it was generating in the market, and then that's just it. So these are the kind of things I teach uh, in my course. So if you want to learn how to pick this kind of stocks, it's where my program comes in here, which is the Millionaire Trader course. In the Millionaire Trader course, I teach them with ease, using the ETF model, how to pick both growth stocks and turnaround stocks in the market. That's, that's it. So if you master and learn how to pick growth stock and turnaround stock in the stock market, you would be making good money without exposing your capital. Especially if you're in your 40s, 50s in the market, you preserve your you preserve your capital in TB or money market. Use the return to make more money. At the end of the year, by the time your uh, instrument matures, you would have made more money because you mastered the art of picking both growth stocks and turnaround stocks in the market. Like I said, here I'm going to teach you how to find the hottest sector in the market. One of the things that was responsible for the increase in price of these stocks was because they were in the hottest sector. It's so simple. They were in the hottest sector. Last sector, last year, consumer goods stock was hot because of inflation, 
So NASCON was hot. This is the company that sell inelastic products. NASCON was hot. PZ was hot. UBA banking stocks made a lot of money last year. Exchange rates, interest rates, events. Um, I think it was early last year that the NASCON activity happened. And then corn oil benefited from removal of from uh, first subsidy. So you can see that each of these stocks benefited from economic events, and which is what I teach in my explosive stock: how to find hottest sector that are benefiting from economic events, and then how to analyze the fundamentals, the financial of this stock for trading. The way you analyze stock for trading is different from investment. It's not the same. A lot of people are used to analyzing stock as if they are investing. Many people have been getting it wrong when it comes to analyzing financial statements. Financial statements for investor and for trader, they are completely different. So in my course, I teach them what to do when analyzing stock for trading, and then learn exactly how to buy low and sell high. I, one of the strategies that we demonstrated in our section, complete section, is how to know oversold stock. Like I went to the market, did the scanning, and we were able to find multiple stocks that were oversold. Even before the market started picking up, I already told them in the section that watch out, the market is about to pick up if it breaks above this level. Why? Because we've mastered the art of understanding demand and supply in the market. It's a one-month program. It's a one-month section with task and follow-up. So if you are interested in joining this section, take the descriptions of, my video, uh, of this video. I will drop a link uh, it will take you to a form. On that form, you will see an account to pay in. Once you pay, you can fill in the form, and then we we'll most likely reach out to you. This particular program is limited. It is very limited. And our next section is coming up in October. And then by October, we should get started in this uh, section. So if this video makes more sense to you, and you want to watch videos like this, get more knowledge and insights, kindly subscribe or hit the subscription button, turn on the notification bell, so that when I release videos like this, you'll be among the first to get an update.